Hey everybody, welcome. Yeah, I've got to... I've got to throw a bat on the floor. <laughs> yeah, I've got to... Trim, trim this guy which you saw me throw. So what I've done is I've... That, that, that um, bat pad that you saw me throw, all I've done is just put a plastic over it, you see, just to keep it, keep it moist, so I can reuse it, and then I haven't got to, to re-throw it. So, so, just going to, Actually, I think what I'm going to do is throw it on, I'm going to put this bat down. Reason being, it's a question of thickness, you see, this is a thinner bat than that one. Slightly thinner. And the reason for that is because it's a taller form, I'm trimming it. I'm sitting down, you see, on the wheel. So let's just center up this, this bat, okay? So we just now just tap center that. Get him on center. As I told you before, you want to you don't want you want the bat to be running reasonably true. Okay, so this five pound jar, I want to trim the foot. Let's just have a look at it, see that he's round. Yeah, not too bad. So we're just gonna damp the wheel head and damp the rim. invert him. Before I do that, let me just... Yeah, okay. Just wanted to have a feel there of the thickness through the base, you see. Okay, let's get that. Is that running true? Is that running true? All right. So teach yourself how to tap center, right? So useful. Once you've learned how to do it, you'll wonder why you, how you survived, you know? Don't use all these fang newfangled grips to hold pots, you know, they're just a, They won't, you won't learn how to tap center if you use some 
some kind of gripping mechanism to do it for you. You'll never learn to train your eye and get your eye-hand coordination. You, the only way to learn is by doing. So I'm going to be using these two tools pretty much. I want to demonstrate this um, what I call a strap trim tool. Alright, let's start off with him. I've not used this one yet, it's, you know. Well, Simon, if it was so good, why does it keep coming off the wheel? Well, because it does sometimes, you just have to. See, I like this tool because I can, I'm, it allows me to trim broader areas of the piece. Whereas if I start using this tool, because it's only got such a small, a small cutting area. If you're not careful, you see, you see, I, if you if you dig it in, you, you you see, you put lines in it, scratch lines around. That's why I, I like this kind for this kind of operation yeah. you know and if he does if the if he does come off the wheel just an opportunity isn't it to pick the pot up and feel it you see and you need to do that when you're trimming you, you know you're not going to be able to just put the pot on the wheel head fasten it down and trim it from A to Z maybe without taking it off once in a while just to to feel the thickness of, through the foot or through the the wall here So, you notice my hand posture, okay? When you're trimming, you don't want to be trimming with whatever tool you're using. You don't want to be trimming, you know, with your arms flapping around, okay? Compact your body. Tuck in your elbows, okay? Get into a good posture. You see my posture here, one there. My thumb here, bridging across to the tool. All right, it's all going to one hand support the other, you see? Just want to give it a little bit of concavity. Concavity? What on earth is that mean, son? I guess concavity is the say opposite of convexity then. I don't think such words exist except in my head. So it's quite important at this stage to
to apply as I'm trimming the top section of the pot here or the, what is the bottom section really but because it's uppermost if I'm applying a lot of pressure here it's going to want to push the pot away isn't it so it's quite important to apply pressure down with this hand here you see right Don't have the wheel going around too fast. And that is something that is difficult with an electric wheel, I appreciate. Uh, the tendency is to go too fast most of the time. <clears throat> so just to, here's a thought for you. You see, invariably when you make a pot, um, the pot is not 100% concentric. Do you know what I mean? So you might find your eye, I'm looking here, I'm trimming here, but if I come down here, I may find that the pot is very slightly running out of true. That can happen, it does happen. but don't fret over it. The thing is, you see, if I was to true it up right there, here, he's, he is running a little bit out there, you see. Okay, so if I, if I true that there, like that, now you're gonna find up here, he's running out, you see, very slightly. So sometimes what you can do is aim for somewhere halfway between, say about there. All right. And that will mean if you do get him true there, he's going to be out of true there and out of true there. But well, we, we're that's why we're going to trim. We can trim that away. You see so that it's not then noticed. The, 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 other, the other thing is that when a pot is stationary, <laughs> in other words, it's in the station, <laughs> it ain't moving. And when it isn't moving around on a wheel, you can't see all these little irregularities. You only see them, you see, because it's going round and round on a wheel. Once the, the pot is stationary, then those things are not observed anymore. Sometimes a little bit of irregularity is actually quite nice and quite acceptable. All right. There, there is, there is a certain beauty in irregularity, where not everything is absolutely like it's made on a machine. You know. Okay, I'm just going to trim out here. Are we in the picture. Are we in the picture? Yeah, let's just, I'll just zoom in on that a touch just so you can see what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I thought, I suppose in my own
way of looking at pottery and ceramics, I'm not particularly drawn to the very, very um, precisely made pots. I'm rather more I'm rather more drawn to the slightly more loosely thrown pots. They're not they don't look like they've been made by a machine. There's a certain freedom there, you see. A freedom a certain freedom of expression. Which I prefer rather than the rather exact, absolutely, I mean it looks like some people, I mean I'm not, I'm not knocking people who are good craftsmen or good craftsmanship, it's just my personal preference. It's a slightly a mix between trying to find good craftsmanship but also a little bit of freedom of expression. So you see the maker's hand in the work, you see. The other side of that coin is, it's always a fine line, you see. The other side of that coin is that then people become very contrived in the way that they work and that they deliberately are doing things to make it look like it is handmade. I don't like that, you see. I like it to happen naturally. That's just my own. Tell me what you think, you know, I mean. So because this has got a curve here, I can use it to make a concave if I want to. By altering the angle, if you see, like that, it's straight here. But if I turn the tool, the tool more like that, it's more round there. Okay. So after you've trimmed, just put the wheel, the uh, pot back on the wheel, and just doctor the edge a little bit because it's been face down on the wheel and it might have left a rather kind of ugly flattened look you see so you want to just don't put a sponge on it just put some water and use your fingers just to redondify <laughs> it's not a word my redondify you don't know what that means do you <laughs> redondify redondify may, means to make round and it's actually, because in, in the Spanish language, as those of you who are Spanish, or Spanish speaking, uh, the word for round is redondo, I believe, as far as I remember. Redondo. So, redondify. But you see, if you didn't know any Spanish, you wouldn't, you wouldn't know that, perhaps. All right, well, there it is. That is... Oh, let me pull back the camera. Sorry, I had the camera in then. I forgot and I put it in. That's the problem, you see. If you alter the focus and you get involved in conversation, the next thing you know, you've... So... Um, let's see if I can get that off the wheel. Oop. That's the trimmed foot. Um, okay, as I said to you, you know, if anybody's, uh, the, these, these, these strap trim tools, um, these ones have got uh, heat shrink uh, rubberized handles now. I've done away with that duct tape. Not because the duct tape was really bad, but you know, it's sort of, it looks, doesn't look the part, does it? 
these look a little bit better because they're and they're a little bit soft. So if you're interested in any of these, go to my website, you'll see them there. If you buy two, you get them like a couple of bucks off each one. Alright. Thanks for watching folks. Appreciate you tuning in. And uh, I hope that this is has you found it interesting. I just wanted to do a demo there, show you how that strap trim tool is used. Now of course you could use it on a plate if you had a broad charger or a plate and you want to remove more material. Whereas you'd find using this a bit tedious. With this one you can get a bit more of a, bro a broader sweep, if you know what I mean. Alright, simonhpottery.com is my website and I have an Etsy, Etsy shop there I'm trying to get some orders out for Christmas now um, but uh, some will arrive before Christmas and some maybe after I don't know um. Ooh. okay folks hey I'll see you in the next video keep practicing ta-ra